you guys. Which camera are you using right now? And what is your opinion on it? Let me know in the comments. Number 5. Sony ZV-1 – Best for Beginners Sony ZV-1 is an attempt to fill the gap between what you can achieve with your smartphone and what you can do with a more expensive mirrorless camera. The Sony ZV-1 is a 20-megapixel compact camera geared towards vlogging. It has a new and novel directional microphone next to the flash hot shoe, and there's a fully articulating touchscreen display. The ZV-1 shoots in 4K up to 30p and Full HD up to 120p, and features a 24-70mm equivalent f1.8-2.8 to lens. Although the Sony ZV-1 is designed specifically with vloggers in mind, it's quite capable as a conventional compact stills camera too. If you're a hybrid shooter who's interested in capturing both video and stills, but doesn't want to carry around two cameras, the ZV-1 has a lot to offer. The ability to easily swap between shooting videos and stills is one of the greatest assets of the ZV-1, made easier if you're using the memory recall functions in the camera. Number 4. Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III – Best Vlogging Camera As good as the latest smartphones are, there are still plenty of reasons to use a dedicated pocket camera. Pros who reach for a big camera with changeable lenses for work may want something smaller for more casual outings. The Canon PowerShot G7X III is the third in a series of 1-inch type sensor compacts aimed at smartphone camera upgraders and enthusiast photographers looking for a small second camera. Its core photography feature, notably its fast 24-100mm equivalent f1.8-2.8 lens, is very similar to the G7X II that preceded it, but Canon has given the Mark III a new stacked CMOS sensor and Digic 8 processor that together promise better image quality and performance. As with several recent Canon cameras, both compact and ILC, the G7X Mark III can shoot raw bursts at 30 frames per second, and it can do so for quite a while, with a camera displaying a bar on the left side of the display representing the buffer capacity. A smartphone may suffice for some, but if you prefer the ergonomics and the handling of a traditional camera, the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III is worth a look. It's not our absolute favorite camera in the category, but it is a very capable compact. Number 3. Sony Alpha A6600 – Best Battery Life this camera has an amazing weatherproof design with a large grip that makes the camera feel more comfortable and secure in hand. I love how they designed the chassis because it's fashioned from magnesium alloy and it looks very premium. I also noticed it has a 3-inch touchscreen LCD and this one tilts up to 180 degrees to face forward. The A6000 series has been popular for vlogging for years now and that's because they're very compact. The best feature in my opinion is the real-time tracking autofocus technology. This system is capable of tracking a subject and focusing on it very quickly, and the best thing is you can use real-time tracking autofocus technology to your in-video capture as well. The A6600 provides amazing video quality, sharp and clear images that anyone would love. I should also mention that the 5-axis in-body optical image stabilization mechanism has been adapted as the stabilization unit for the APS-C sensor on the A6600, and the results that this camera gives are just brilliant. If you want one of the best cameras for YouTube and things like that, you should definitely consider taking a look at the A6600 and see if this camera is the one you were looking for. Number 2. GoPro Hero 9 Black – Best for Action Shots Action cameras are going modular. GoPro's latest attempt to get one up on the DJI Osmo Action and the Acaso Brave 7 LE means a front display for vloggers and taking selfies, higher resolution photos and video grabs, but most importantly, a removable lens cover. The Hero 9 Black's buttons are slightly larger and protrude more, which makes them easier to operate when wearing gloves. As always, this GoPro is waterproof to 33 feet or 10 meters, and the folding mounting fingers on the undercarriage remain from the Hero 8 Black. The Hero 9 Black has a 23.6 megapixel sensor, which in turn means it can capture video at 5K in 30 frames per second at 100 Mbps. If that's impressive, it's also incredibly capacity hungry. The 4K 60fps is probably the one to go for if you're after both efficiency and smoothness. The general step up in resolution also means the abandoning of 720p, with faux lens options comprising Superview 16mm, Wide 16-34mm, and Linear 19-39mm, as well as Narrow at 27mm. Is the Hero 9 Black the best GoPro ever? Surely it is. Detailed, clean and smooth, stable video in well-lit environments is assured, 
while an improved ability with photos and that upsize sensor means higher resolutions and grabs from videos that have a decent amount of detail. Number 1. Canon EOS 90D – Best All Round The Canon EOS 90D is the DSLR version of the mirrorless EOS M6 Mark II, since the specs are nearly the same. Canon here lets buyers choose what type of shooting they want, a smaller and a lighter mirrorless model or a mid-sized DSLR with an optical viewfinder. It comes with a 32.5 megapixel CMOS sensor and it uses Canon's Digit 8 processor. This one is a DSLR that functions better when used in live view, thanks to the excellent dual pixel AF system. This model is a fraction wider than the 80D, but it is a bit thinner, and it feels extremely comfortable to use because it's aluminium alloy, polycarbonate resin, and it wouldn't bother the photographer ever over long durations. It has an 8-way joystick on the rear of the camera, which is pretty cool, however, the addition of the joystick means that some of the buttons have been moved around a little. If you want an excellent raw image quality, both detail capture and dynamic range, this is what you're looking for. It has a lovely optical finder and a pleasing JPEG color. This camera is capable of turning out excellent images, but in terms of performance, it's best when the mirror is locked up. Anyone who's seeking an easy-to-use DSLR for YouTube, this model is one of them. Buying Guide Mounts and Lenses Unless you opt for an adapter, something that may or may not provide full functionality in terms of electronic focus and aperture control, buying a camera body locks you into the lenses made by either that manufacturer or a third-party lens maker such as Sigma, which design products specifically for different brands. This is why photographers agonize over switching to Sony. They've built up large lens collections and find the prospect of starting over difficult to stomach. Also, Sony hasn't yet caught up to the legacy brands in terms of the breadth of lens offerings, though that's changing every year. Megapixels Megapixels are a measure of the resolution of a camera. Think of it like this. The greater the number of megapixels, the larger the high-quality sharp prints you can make. Now, it's important to point out that you probably don't need a camera that has a huge number of megapixels. For typical 4x6-inch and 5x7-inch prints, you only need 4 megapixels to get good results, and an 8-megapixel camera will easily make 8x10-inch prints. Viewfinders Most point-and-shoots don't have viewfinders and instead have an LCD screen to help you line up a shot. Larger LCD screens are more expensive but offer you a better view of your framing. Some high-end compacts still have optical viewfinders, which are helpful for composing in bright light when it's difficult to see an LCD screen because of glare. Image Stabilization Since the camera will often choose a slower shutter speed to get a better exposure, an image can have a blurred effect even with a sturdy grip. Image Stabilization, or IS as it's also known, can help with this. The two methods often used are optical image stabilization and sensor movement. Optical IS adjusts the lens to compensate for movement, while sensor movement adjusts the position of the sensor 